Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone with the grace of the Lord. I would like to invite you to stand up. Is it weak here? It is on, right? I don't have enough power in my voice to. It. And acabou de ligar. The fault is always mine. <laughs> oh, boy. Three against one. We always lose. Revelation 3 8. Was a text um, that was suggested. Uh, suggests for the preaching. Three. If if you didn't find revelations, uh, it's going to be. Uh, that's tough. Before Genesis. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Eight. Let's read all together. I. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Amen. The church may be seated.
Blessed in the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, this text speaks of everything that is the project of God towards man. In this, those simple verses, we will see words that are completely connected to the life of the church. And you see from the beginning, from the beginning all the way to the fulfillment of what is the project of God for salvation of man. And this project is complete. It was was not begin to be built little by little. It was created in eternity by God. because of God's knowledge and now this project is given to man and God uses many examples of servants many historical characters of the Bible we will see that that in everything that they went through that defeats the, their victories and the conquests. Everything has for us a teaching. If you take in consideration the Word of God, oh, the whole context of the Word, all the riches that is in the Bible, you see that truly God loves each we're going to see everything that will that happen, everything that will happen is for the good that w the one who serves the Lord and the one who serves God. Because the, the commitment of God is with the faithful. It's a word, it's a sentence that we cannot f uh, forget to repeat. The text speaks of an open door speaks of the word speaks of my name and here we will see the Trinity the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit we're going to see here the function of each one and at the same time all of them together in order to bring men to the rescue all to bring men to an understanding and acceptance, not by force, but by the Spirit. Because men can only, is only able to see the Gospel, is only able to see the Word of God if man is taken over by the Spirit. Because through force, men will stay one day, two days, one year, ten years, but there comes a moment and that that person is not be able to withstand it. But the only way for men to survive, the only way for men to be the target of the mercy of God is when man keeps the word and he does not deny the name. The door opened up and it remains open. In the beginning of everything, God chose a man God chose a family. God chose a nation. The chosen people of God, the Hebrew people. And God now, He uses this group of people, this nation. God begins to demonstrate His power. God begins to cause God begins to cause other people to see the difference of what is to serve a true God and what is to serve a God that has that doesn't have the power that our God has. And then God begins to act. He uses the kings, he uses the prophets, he uses the judges, he uses the people, 
servants of God, fearing the Lord, faithful to Him, and God bless them greatly. Miracles take place. Wonderful, wonder, wondrous things happen. Things that we we spend the whole night, the rest of the year, speak of the power of God, of the wonder that God has done in the and continue doing in the midst of His people on behalf of His people. This is the Old Testament. The Old Testament. We'll see the whole history, everything that God has done and what God wants to do in the midst of the church. God came to the world, Jesus came to the world and He opens up a door. Before salvation was only to Israel, but, but now with Jesus the door opened up and this door remains open because Jesus paid a price so that not only Israel would be able to achieve salvation, but the door was also open to everyone. Man, humanity, every being who lives, every nation, every tribe, every tongue, all of those who confess God have the right now to enter through this open door. It is independent of the social status, dependent of the financial situation, or color, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you open up your heart and that you accept this open door and that you go through this door. Here the door is opened. The New Testament, Jesus gives access to everyone. He becomes our attorney. He, he becomes our intermediary, intermediator between God and man. There is no other way. Salvation of God, the miracle of God, is not horizontal. It's vertical. The miracle happens not in a horizontal way, but it's vertically. It's from God towards man. There is nothing really in, regarding the spiritual life in a, in, a, in a horizontal way between man and man. All the honor and all the glory is given to God. Salvation comes from above. Salvation comes because Jesus paid a price. His blood was shed so that today you could enter, enter through this door. And the blessing is like this. It's from God towards man. And now, when we enter through this door, all, do, all of those who call upon, all of those who enter through this door that has their own experience of uh, the new birth and accept Jesus as the Savior of their lives, now they become heirs of their inheritance of what God has reserved for men, all of us. Because the door opened up and a miracle takes place. And now, everything that is our necessity, everything that is our needs, everything that we wish for, we deposit it in prayer to the Father through the name of Jesus. And the Father answers our prayers. The Father now begins to bless us in a way, a, a great way. All our necessities, uh, whether they are spiritual, material, emotional, sentimental, everything, in a financial life, and economic way, it doesn't matter. We have access to this. You know why? Because we went through, we went through the door. We're no longer distant. We have gone beyond. We entered. We already s went through the process of over the action which is our salvation, which our choice towards God. And our God, in a wonderful way, He answers us. And no one can close this door. No one. Sometimes you go through trials. Sometimes you will go through difficulties. But the word says that that man when man is uh, under the hands of God, under the protection of God, he's the target of the love and mercy of God. We speak about the open door. But there is another aspect here that says, my word. 
Jesus, at a certain point, he said, you fail because you, we, you don't know the scriptures. The majority of our, of our failures, they are because we don't know the scriptures. The majority of our mistakes, of our defeats, you know, what is the cause? It is because we don't know the scriptures. Because if we knew the scripture, and if we lived the scripture, we would not be defeated. Sometimes people have their own reasons. They say, it's difficult. I don't have a job. The, the, bus the economy in the world is difficult. I don't have a green card in order to look for a job. Sometimes my health is not good, it's weak. Sometimes we, we come up with reasons, we find justification to everything. Sometimes we even, if you look through the human reason, you might think, oh, if I had something, if I had this, then I would not be suffering today. But it is interesting that the word says, a word says that you kept my word. And when man he knows a word and he keeps the word, he will go through the same trials. He will go through the same difficulties. But the difference is the following. Because the faithful, he faces the trials with gratitude in his heart. Sometimes you go through a trial, a person leaves the church, a person rebels against God, they even blame, sometimes they even blame God. And then you turn to your side, and there is a brother there. It may even be in a worse situation. Nothing goes well. He tries and tries and tries, and nothing goes well. But he is there glorifying the Lord. He's always with a smile on his lips, with a joyful face. Is everything all right, my brother? And he answers, everything's all right. Isn't it true? How many times do we see this? How many times do we meet situations like this or people going through miserable moments, difficult moments, situations that are impossible to be resolved, but they are there, faithful to the Lord, singing songs of praise, glorifying the Lord, they are always willing to do God's work. There are people like this, you know why? Because they are keeping the word of God. And, man, and God honors when we do like this. God honors, you know why? Because when God, He sees people like this, our Savior he stands up before the Father and He says, This is my servant. He deserves that the door is open. He deserves the blessing. He, deser he deserves the answer. I poured out my blood for his life. And that's what causes us to be different. And that's what is the difference between the one who serves God and the one who doesn't serve God. It is your disposition, it's your sincerity, it's your persis persistence with God and you opening up your heart and you keep the word of God and not to deny the name of Jesus. Job was a great servant. The enemy of our souls went there and said, God, he has everything, he has riches, has a good life, he has plenty. So why don't you do a test? Take everything away from him. And all of a sudden, Job lost everything. He got sick, he lost his children, he got, lost his health, he, he lost his fortune, he, he lost everything. He scraped his wounds with a piece of, uh, a, piece of a broken um, vessel. Can you imagine? The pain was so great, they 
would come up with the way to create more pain in order to relieve the pain that he was going through. So his wife said the following joke, stop this. Curse your God and then curse a God and die. But Job, it was a servant that kept the word of God. He didn't deny the name of God. You know what he answered to her? He said, you speak like a, a foolish woman. That's what his answer, he answered to his wife. That what his, was his answer to his wife. My brethren, when the servant of God, when he is faithful, when he has the word, when he keeps the word, he is different. He goes through trials. He faces the trials with the knowledge that at any moment God can send the help. He never goes grows desperate. He never loses the focus or the target. He doesn't lose salvation. He never let himself go by the things of this life because he knows the word. He keeps the word. The door was open and he became aware of the mystery of God which is in the word. And the mystery is Jesus that is being revealed to him and to us every day. When the servant of God leaves the word, it's not, it's not only preaching the word, but we are called to leave the word. We are not being called to be preachers of the word. We are not being called to be pastors. We are being called to be to live the word. The word is lived, is testified, is shown through demonstrations. And when you, the servant of God walks like this, God honors his life. Well, you continue having trials, but you will face them. He will be victorious on each one of them. Because God, having, but having little strength, but you kept my word. We are weak, but the Lord gives strength to us. In Jesus, we are more than victorious. From the moment in which you went through the door, from the moment in which you accepted Jesus and His sacrifice on the cross, you are now more than victorious. You know why? Because you are, you are already victorious. You already won. You are not competing. In a competition, you are already on in heaven. For God, you are already a winner. That's why we are more than victorious, because we are already won. And the secret is the Word and the blood. And when we keep the word, we do not deny the name. And the name is exactly this. is the name Jesus. Because when the servant of God, he is in Jesus, he is in the blessing. He is in heaven. It's a song that we just sang. There might come a storm. It doesn't matter. The Lord is with us. When man keeps the word, he is like the parable that Jesus told about the house that was built on the rock. Jesus made a comparison. The one who builds the house on the sand and the one who builds the house on the rock. There may come a storm, there may come a storm, there can come anything. It doesn't matter. When you build your house over the sand, the trial comes and the difficulties and the attacks of this life, and then the house falls, falls to the ground. But when you build your house over the rock, right, everything comes. Sometimes it comes, it, it, it's even worse, but the house does not fall. You know why? Because we are in Jesus. He is our strength. He brings strength to us. He keeps us standing. He causes us to give long strides towards eternity in only a single path. Man is not there and here. Man is focused. His eyes are gazing only towards heaven. Man is not looking here and there. Man knows where it is. You know where he came from. You know where he is. And you know where 
he knows where he's going because he's firm on the rock. The storms may come, but he's firm with a thankful heart towards God. He does not deny God. He does, doesn't deny. The word does not allow him to deny the Lord Jesus. And when we are in this situation, when we went through the door, we learn the word, we're keeping the word, we live in the word, we are not denying the Lord. The doors keep opening up before us. Sometimes what man wants the most is that God answer their prayers. It's good, isn't it? When you are in a trial and, and you pray and said, Lord, have mercy. You come to church, you come to early dawn, you become a Christian. <laughs> you become a real Christian. You carry the Bible. You, you even buy a music CD, Christian music. You listen to it all day at work. You become a real Christian. And when God answers, then you don't need to pray anymore. Why pray? You already received the blessing. The answer already came. When we are in Jesus, there's no bad weather. On the trial or difficulty, on the blessing, we are always well with the Lord. We do not deny the name of Jesus. Curse your God and die. Job, it will be better for you. We do not deny our God. You know why? Because we know a God who is truthful, a God that's beside us, a God is always walking with us. We know a God that is at the disposal of our necessities. He take, has pleasure in blessing men. And God blesses, not only uh, on the hum humanly speaking, but he blesses us in every way. We are always happy. We are joyful. When you look at a servant of God, the one that has gratitude in his heart, he demonstrates happiness in, on his face. When you speak with him, he beams peace. He beams tranquility. When it's wonderful when you speak with someone and, and you come to hear something, to give an advice sometimes, and you end up being more blessed than the person. Hey, wait a minute. That person comes here to hear, and now I am the one who was blessed. The true servant of God that keeps the word is not denied the name of Jesus. He does that. Whatever he passes by, he leaves a track of peace. Whatever he passes by, he leaves tranquility, rejoicement. This is wonderful. It's wonderful. He does not deny the name. Everything that he does. In his business. At work. In his activities. His actions. He does not deny. Deny the name is... It's, I don't want this. Deny the name sometimes. We deny Jesus with our own actions. Peter. He denied Jesus three times. He didn't have to say. But by the way he acted through his actions, through the way he acted when he was questioned, when he was approached by people. When Jesus saw him, at that moment, Jesus, uh, Peter, no. When they exchanged look, when he saw Peter, he realized, I denied and man, many times man does that. When man does not know the Lord, does not keep the word, he denies Jesus with his own actions. And denying Jesus is not only sinning. Denying Jesus is when, oh, it's like a capital sin. It's, isn't there like a big, uh, terrible sin? You know, that's not what it is. A sin is just a sin. There's no size of sin for God. A sin, what is the origin of sin? Is the disobedience. If you're disobeying the word, if you are if you are living according to your own will and not according to God's will, you are denying Jesus. You are denying what God has given you. And man 
just wants to say, I want, I want, I want a blessing. And the secret is here, you see? The secret is here. When you enter through the, the door, when you keep the word, you don't deny Jesus, the door is open. The door of happiness, the door of the blessing, of the marriage, the blessing, a door of, of the blessing, a familial blessing, and the physical health, emotional, sentimental uh, door. All the doors are open. But now, how you you are you living the word? How are you doing? Are you keeping the word? Or you just have the Bible just as a book that you you keep there at home. Sometimes when you come to church, you bring it. Sometimes you don't even have to bring it anymore. You have an app on your phone, right? But how are you doing? This word tonight is for is for our meditation. Are you keeping the word of God? Are you denying Jesus? Are you living a life according to what God expects you to live? If you are living in this way, according to what we read here, according to what you just read, the doors will open up. And they will remain open. Do you know why? Because God has already decreed this. But if you need, maybe you need to go through the door or know the word you haven't done it yet there is still time do it as quickly as possible don't suffer anymore we are not we are not being created by God and and we are not being called by God to be suffering and living this miserable life that you are going through but you are being called by God to be victorious something is wrong if you are having defeats if you are persisting on defeat if nothing goes well, nothing gets better, something is wrong. Because it's here. It's already right. You know what is wrong? You're not leaving the Word. You're not keeping the Word of God. You're not placing this life on your life to be the direction of your life. Do this. From this day forward, open your heart and allow God to speak to you. Open your heart and leave the Word of God in the same way, in the way that God wants you to live. May God bless us. Let us hear a song. <coughs>
Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brother, the Lord has given a, a couple of gifts for the service tonight. In one of the gifts, the Lord show, has shown a man that came here and needs to have an experience uh, uh, that will be a landmark in his life regarding salvation. He knows the gospel. He knows the, the way, but he doesn't leave the way. Is it low? Once again? No, it's not me. It was not me this time. This time it was not me. I didn't do anything. It's got to sing and the voice is, is bad and they cut it off on the back. The voice is warm, so then they cut it off not to scare anybody here. <laughs> You lifted the volume too much. Now, the Lord has given a gift, and the Lord has shown a man who entered here. This man is knowledgeable about the word. There's a difference between when you, when you keep the word and know the word. Whoever knows the word needs to keep it. Knowing only is not enough. You need to know and to live and to keep the word. The Lord has shown a man that is knowledgeable about the word. He knows. But he doesn't have an experience of salvation. And tonight the Lord wants to give him this experience, the experience of salvation. The door of salvation will op be open for you tonight. This is the most important door because this is the beginning. When this door is open, afterwards everything is simpler. The beginning, the principle is this: the word of self, the door of salvation is the most important door. Amen. The Lord has shown here, giving you this means of you to no longer be only a person that is knowledgeable about the word, but somebody that lives the word, that keeps the word of God. The Lord has also shown in another gift. A storm was approaching towards, and there's a couple, there was a couple, uh, a, a great storm was coming towards this couple, and there was a voice that was warning them about the storm, but, but they didn't hear the voice, they were not paying attention, surely, they were wasting time, the family life, the couple, the family living in prayer and harmony for sure this this disagreement removed their attention and they stopped hearing the voice of God and began to hear the voice of man and this is horrible isn't it when you stop hearing the voice of God in order to hear the voice of the wife it says or the husband that always says says no it's complicated hear the voice of Jesus that's much better hear the voice of God which is the vo the living voice, the voice that gives advice, the voice that brings comfort, the, the voice that gives comfort. So then the voice of the wife is going to be, uh, is going to speak and it's not going to be any problem. The voice of the husband is going to say, there's not going to be any problem. There's no difficult, ni there's no difficulty when you are in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is going to give them another opportunity. Isn't it true? The Lord caused them to build once again their home upon the rock. They stopped being foolish. They stopped arguing, discussing, wasting time. They now, but they now are living salvation here on earth. They began living salvation in Jesus. And the Lord also has shown a key and many doors that needed to be open, and there was a, a single key and tonight the Lord was going to use this single key in order to open many doors Amen so now I'm going to invite the brethren to stand up I'm going to ask Pastor Sab to stand up here to come here and also the ushers and deacons are going to be here and tonight the Lord is going to be a blessing to each one of us
to all of us. Are you willing to live the gospel according to the way that God wants you to live? Are you willing to keep the word of God? Are you willing to testify and no longer deny the name of Jesus? Do you want do you want this? Is that what you want? The doors are going to be open. Amen. And tonight, tonight the Lord has shown that many doors are going to be open. The door of salvation has already been opened here. The Lord has given this man a knowledgeable, knowledgeable woman, but now he's going to live in Jesus. The door opened up. What is the door that you want, that you need? A blessing at home? Uh, a door of uh, a new job? A door of a, a green card, isn't it? Is this what you want? Dark? The Lord can give it. We have faith for this. God is powerful. But now, what you're going to do with this, you need, now you need to place your life in the altar of the Lord. That's Lord, her mercy. I want this green card in order for me to serve you better. Why not? Is this what you want? You need a blessing of health, physical health for you, for your family members that that is going through a, a health problem. God is going to open this door and we're going to give assistance to the brethren in this way. Think about a door that needs to be opened for you. If you want, you kneel down. We are going to pray for you. I already spoke about a couple doors, right? Health, uh, familial blessing, sentimental blessing. The one that I, that I didn't speak, if you need, place that door before the altar of the Lord. And God's going to hear, therefore, the Lord will hear your blessing. We're going to pray for you with lay of hand, the ushers and Pastor Sabda, the, pastor, the deacons and, and Pastor Sabda, we are all going to pray for you. So now let us... Praise the name of the Lord, another song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Place your necessity before God's altar. Whatever you need, place it on before God's altar. He's here present. The blessing of joy. The blessing of forgiveness. Peace at home. Uh, blessing in your marriage. We all need this bless those blessings. They need to be renewed. Place them all before God's altar and God will hear. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The deacons and the pastor are going to pray with the laying of hands. Thus says the Lord, my beloved children, your God set up a, a meeting with each one of you. It's not a coincidence that you are here. My Holy Spirit has changed each one of you all day so that you would be here and to you my son you fought a battle in order to be here but you were victorious and you, you here you are and I have knocked to the door of your heart we're asking to vi enter into our life by your heart uh, it's closed and today I tell you, my son, that your life will change. And your God, the one who inhabits in your heart, will be transforming your life and the life of the, your family members. Only believe, my son, because I am your God that promises and fulfills each promise, all the promises. My church, Praise the name of our God because you are have been experiencing my blessings. You have seen my hands upon you because my hands are laying upon each one of you in order to pour out the blessings that come from heaven. Blessings which that affects your material life and especially your spiritual life. Glorify in the name of our God because my angels they camp around you and I say to each one who have placed their lives before my altar and I'll be answering your petitions and during this week and next week when you gather glorify for everything that I have operated throughout this week because thus says the Lord Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus
Lord God, we praise your holy name for yet another night in your presence for this week that is beginning. We know that as you have spoken to us, you will be with us. Another week in which you will see the glory of God for the deliverances, for the victories, Lord. Take us all in peace. Receive our gratitude. The adoration of your church is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may sit down. Our next service is going to be Tuesday at 8 o'clock p.m. The Lord has given a revelation that we spoke about the means of grace. So we, the brethren, need to get ready. And those who can't be here will be here Tuesday night. Our service has come to its end. We already prayed for everyone. The Lord has spoken to everyone. But if you still need a prayer, we are here at your disposal. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone.